So over the last month, I added 18 plants to my collection. The first one here is a Begonia Cleopatra, and it's uh, one of three Begonias that I acquired this month. I got this guy from my boyfriend. He gave me three plants, uh, one big one at the back, two little ones down there in the front, and they all had roots, so all I had to do was pot them up in soil. And I did lose a few leaves on the big one, um, unfortunately, but it seems to have stabilized and the blooms have uh, continued to open up. So I'm very happy about that. So that's plant number one. The second begonia that I got is the begonia luzonensis and to be honest it's looking a little bit limp so I'm slightly worried about it. I did water it today, I'll see how it goes. Um, I did do an entire video on potting this guy up. I got two cuttings from this without roots so I rooted them for 14 days in, so uh, in water excuse me, and I also did a leaf cutting for the first time so you can see the leaf shoved into the soil right there at the back. Um, and I don't always pot my plants in nice pots, but this one is very nice. It's got a very cool tone look on the leaf, very silvery, um, ashy kind of look. So I thought this pot uh, would be very nice. And uh, yeah, it is extremely heavy though, and it scratched my tin surface. So the third begonia that I got, I am actually not sure what it is. I guess it's a cultivar as many um, begonias from the store are. Um, this one is very interesting. It's got so many things going on. It's got furry petioles. Um, it's got like this strawberry kind of look on the bottom of the leaf. And then the leaf itself is kind of iridescent, black and dark green, I guess. And here you see a close up of the baby leaves curling and furling like little fronds. I've had it for a couple weeks and uh, honestly, I have not noticed any change in the plant, maybe because I've been so distracted with other plants anyway, but uh, yeah, it seems to be easy to care for so far. And here I'm just showing you the three begonias again side by side so you can compare them. This brings my total begonia collection to five. I also have a, let me try to say this, begonia aconitifolia and a begonia bipinatifida. There you go. All right, on to the next category, that is jewel orchids. I am so thrilled this month because I managed to get four jewel orchids. Two of them are the same species, the Ludicia discolor, which is this one in front of us. Um, this one has silver veining, while the other one has more of a reddish pink um, veining. This one is a very, very tiny cutting, um, but somehow it has uh, managed to give me a new leaf being in water. So that's nice. This is the second Ludicia discolor. This one, like I said, has more of a pink um, veining. Very nice. And I noticed as I was filming that uh, there is a scale on one of the new leaves. So I need to get rid of that. So here are the two Ludicia discolors that I acquired. You can see the difference between the veining. The one on the left is more of a silver veining and the one on the right is more of a pink veining. So when it comes to jewel orchids in Singapore, the Ludicia discolors are definitely a little bit more easy to find. But what you see in front of you right here is probably an Anoectochylus formasanus. There we go. This guy is definitely looking a little bit stretched out, but since it has so many little babies coming out at the bottom, it makes it more value for money because you can pretty much just separate them out or cut the stems and propagate them. I think one of the trickier things when it comes to jewel orchids, especially the Anoectochylus genus, I think is identifying them because they come in so many subtle different colors. Um, this one has like a dark leaf and I think it's a silver veining. And I will show you another Anoectochylus later. Last but not least, in the jewel orchid category, we have this Cestorchis variegata. And this one is a little bit different. It doesn't have any sparkly veining. I think of it as a um, comic version of jewel orchids. This one I got bare rooted from the nursery, so I did have to pot it up. I'm using perlite, sphagnum moss, and charcoal. 
and um, it seems to be adapting well. It seems that um, there are little nubs growing out from the notes, so I'm guessing those are roots. So here you can see all four jewel orchids lined up, and here you get a close-up of the veining. Here you can see the common Lodicea discolor compared with the Anorectochylus. And here I went to run and get my mom's Anorectochylus, so you can see a side by side comparison between the two. Again, I'm not very sure of the ID, I'm not even sure if they are Anorectochylus, um, but I just thought that I would show you so you can see the differences between the leaves. Okay, so moving on to our third category, that is succulents and cacti. The first one we have here, I am not sure of the ID because it was just labeled as a succulent. But when I saw it, I was super drawn to the color uh, of the mature leaves. That is like a very faded pink mauve and the new leaves are green. So I thought I'd give it a go. I have killed many succulents in the past, so I'm just hoping that over time I will learn my lessons and get better at it. So if you know the idea of this plant, please let us know. I was drawn to this guy because of the way the leaves grow. It's very flat, fleshy, and they kind of fan out in opposite directions. Super cute. This next succulent has got to be my favorite out of all the plants I'm showing today. This is a Seropagia armandii and it is from the same genus as the common string of hearts. This guy pretty much looks like a dragon, to me at least, with its graphite body and little green scales. It also roots very easily as you will see later, little aerial roots coming out from the stem. Apparently this guy will climb if you stake it, but I've never successfully staked anything before, so hopefully this will respond well. So this is the first cactus that I have purchased. I'm not very familiar with cacti at all. All I know is this is some sort of opuntia. Opuntia? I'm not very sure. But I thought it's super cute. Again, the green is kind of a bit cooler in tone. And the little spikes on them have kind of a bit of a brownish tinge. So it makes it super cute. And also, it's growing like Mickey Mouse. So this guy is not a potato, it is a Cordyciform Stephania erecta. So this is a swollen stem and uh, I hope it grows. I got it from a plant swap. This one didn't really fall under any category, so it's on its own. The Pelionia ripens and I did struggle with this. I got it as three cuttings. One is rooting in water right now. Two of them actually rotted in my substrate, so I am not really sure what's going on. So fingers crossed, I added some more aeration to the medium, so I hope this will survive. So this month, I did acquire three Hoyas. The first one is the Hoya Caldata Sumatra. So I don't really know much about Hoya. I currently only own one, which is the Hoya Carnosa Compacta, and I have been having a hard time getting it to flower all the way. It has bloomed three times, but all three times aborted its blooms before it opened up. So currently it is blooming, and fingers crossed it will open up fully, and then I might have a little bit more confidence getting these next three to flower.
So this is the Hoya Verticillata. I got this just yesterday as a cutting. Um, I have four cuttings and <laughs> they kind of didn't really fit into a jar. So I'm just laying them flat in a saucer of water. So we are down to our last two plants. This one is a crocodile fern for obvious reasons. The leaves pretty much look like reptile skin. So if you have a phobia, you might want to skip ahead. I currently only have one other fern under my care and it is not doing very well. But nevertheless, I still want to give ferns a go and try to get better at taking care of them. So the last plant is a capsicum that I got from my plant swap. It's looking very healthy and I hope that it adjusts well. And I'll let you know if I get any fruit. So there you go, all 18 plants that I added to my collection this month. Please let me know which was your favourite and which ones you might want to get the next time you go to the nursery. Thank you for watching and please subscribe.